Welcome to the Grounds for Sculpture. I'm your host, Savannah Jackson of Les Jardins des Artistes. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us on Le Jardin des Artistes, the show about artists at the Grounds for Sculpture. It's a beautiful day in October 2004, and you are the artist in residence. I'm, I'm really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful building. Their museum building is, is, is quite lovely. It, the way that it works, it's got so much uh, of the superstructure showing, so that allows me to intertwine and use these sticks to some good advantage. Tell us about these sticks. Well, you be behind me you're seeing, or perhaps you will see. <laughs> I'm my first uh, uh, segment of the, the show is a tower, a kind of an architectural tower, uh, and it's, uh, I've woven it out of sticks it's intertwined with the balcony and that's basically what's supporting a, the structure. Uh, I wanted something that looked a little like human architecture but also maybe the human architecture that the birds had imagined and worked on. Uh, and then different uh, parts of different areas in the building I will use in different ways to using sticks at the same time uh, but uh, and holding that material constant but changing the images and the way that I work with them. And where do the sticks come from? Well, we were lucky enough to make contact with uh, Princeton, and the old Princeton nursery is, is under the control of Princeton University, and uh, they're allowing us to gather off of this old nursery site. And you have volunteers here at the grounds helping you collect those? We, we had some volunteers. We, uh, the uh, Mapleton nursery has provided the majority of the labor, but we've had quite a few people in our first segment of gathering out helping us as well. Well, we, we're using privet as unlikely as it sounds. It's uh, n normally in your yard, it's quite gnarly, but the materials that we found had been uh, shaded for a long time and then kind of compressed in their rows. They'd been lined out as for uh, shrubbery stock. And so they're kind of unusual looking, long, thin, white lines. And then we're also using maple which uh, grows in profusion in this area, kind of a red, a red maple, the majority of it. I went there initially and walked their, that property out there, and then uh, beyond that, I'm out there helping gather so that I can, uh, if I see things that I like, I can immediately intercede and say, let's get some more of that, you know. And then we'll, I'm gonna work in three segments here, three three-week segments, so I'll have, you know, a, a, um, a lot of sticks used before. It's maybe 15 tons of sticks, something. The overall uh, show is called Twisted Logic and allows us a lot of latitude in naming the in individual pieces within the show. And where did that name come from, Twisted uh, Logic? Uh, well, uh, dementia. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just riding on the airplane thinking of all the possibilities, writing things down. Oftentimes I, I uh, think up ideas for a, a place by uh, doing uh, word associations with the site or remembering how I feel when I first uh, enter the site, what, it, what is the sense of that place, and, and then I make thumbnail sketches with the, uh, you know, thinking about the site and eventually come up with an idea about how I could best use, best use one site or the other. Immediately, I was hoping to have a, a pivot or an anchor for the show since I have to use the entire museum space, 
and this is central and would allow people to immediately come in the door and see something. The way the show is structured is that um, I'll be working the whole time and that uh, the viewer can come through and watch the process of building as well as seeing the finished works you know, as they're, as they're completed. And so I um, built this central core piece, pivot, uh, a tower, uh, something uh, that is, uh, is hooked into the balcony so that uh, you, if you're up on the second floor, you're able to step into the corner of the balcony and uh, enjoy the sense of what it's like up at the top of the tower, as well as uh, uh, the piece seen from the upper balcony looks more diminutive. It looks more like a, a kind of a, a indigenous hut of some sort. So you walk towards the corner of the balcony and you see it, and then you realize the depth to it, whereas from downstairs, you know, you're viewing it in, in a different way. But it allowed me to entangle in the architecture here. And uh, uh, this cantilevered corner, I was able to use that. The steel structure underneath where the uh, uh, latticework girders, I was able to weave into those and hold it up. There's a pillar underneath uh, part of the wall that I've woven into and helped with the idea that this thing is kind of shoving up under the balcony. So uh, I'm trying to use the, use the, the beauty of the structure of the building and, and kind of intertwine and contrast uh, contemporary architecture with ancient ways of working. And this is an ancient way of working. Well, I think so. Uh, you know, kids go through a building phase in their, in their uh, childhood development, and usually they're either using sticks or clay or uh, dirt. Uh, but sticks are venerable and much uh, relied on uh, material for housing uh, for both uh, humans and, and other animal life and for the millions of years before we uh, started living indoors. We used sticks extensively for, for every conceivable thing because of their availability and utility. So in, in a way, uh, you know, it's easy to conceive that, uh, that I might use sticks or employ them uh, uh, to kind of recreate my own childhood and also to hint at the, the depth of uh, the use of this material in, the, in, in human, human uh, history. And you are one of the few artists doing this. Yes, I, I am. I'm, I've carried it to a, an extreme. <laughs> well, we're glad you have. Well, I'm, I'm really glad to be here in this space because the, I think that the uh, uh, contrast between the, the, uh, the uh, saplings and the, and the landscape that's immediately outside, uh, there's a just interplay between uh, you know, these beautiful uh, uh, shrubs that they have here, these uh, specimen trees, and then the, the sticks as I'm using them. It's, it shows kind of source and practical use uh, all in one view. It's probably one of the reasons you were attracted to the space, I imagine. Yes, you know, it's so unencumbered, too, and, uh, and it's kind of a modern look, and it's just a, it's just a beautiful space. There's a, the interplay with the out of doors here is just so profound that I, I really respond to it. It's just hard to be unhappy here. Good. And upstairs you've started something else on the balcony. Yeah, I'm, I have the idea um, on the upper balcony. I, there's a lot of space up there, and, and of course I want to fill the space and have a credible show. So I'm working into the rafters and building a kind of uh, a big kind of bowl or some, some a shape, kind of a bowl shape on the other side of the uh, this bed that you would, um, if you could imagine taking the top off this tower, laying it up haphazardly against the wall, shoving it up against the ceiling to some degree, and, um, and then using that as a starting point for the second, second piece. And there are people, while you're working, coming through to see. Yeah, um, and as we, uh, you know, now we, we are kind of initially uh, founded here, we're, we're, we've got something to show. And so it'll be easier to have people come in and we could just take the area that we're working on uh, concisely, work there and allow people to travel around and see what we're doing. And since we've got something to compare with, they'll be more interested in what we're doing. People that are coming to the Grounds for Sculpture are generally a selected audience, although I try to think about building things that uh, are attractive or that have associations with 
everyone, whether it be the UPS driver that walks in the building or uh, just just anyone. The most casual viewer is someone that I I reach for, and uh, because they're you know they're and they're uh, and if it resonates with with everyone along the you know of all ilks, then you know you have a good good work and you you can kind of that that interplay that conversation that goes on between immediately between the viewer both during the building process and uh, as you near your final product is is it's very important to me just uh, i mean that's uh, i have all this feedback in one way i mean you know, i don't have to wait and find out months later what people think but also it helps true up your ideas and make you more honest and and uh, and really informs your work and informs you as an artist and as a person. A good sculpture elicits lots of, of uh, associations, and so someone might say, "Wow, you know, this reminds me of my grandparents' farm." You know, uh, you know, my grandparents say we just if they needed a handle for their their rake, they just went out and cut a tree down and used it. Uh, I remember that, and uh, you know, somebody might say something about their childhood that, you know, we played it at this this place, you know, it was a big, uh, you know, big uh, maple tree that was laying on its side, and we played there for years, or I don't, uh, we, you know, in our neighborhood, we had stick town, and, you know, my parents worked on stick town, too, and then when I was a kid, I started working on stick town, so, you know, like these intergenerational spots where people kind of worked at things, and so uh, we're all aware of of pictures we've seen in National Geographic and indigenous people, and we sometimes people have a particular love for nests and bird nests, and say, "God, you know, I had this nest in my backyard, and it was just, you know." So there's a there's a constant level of associations for me. Not only are there is the association with nature, but with drawing and the, and the use of space. So, uh, and in terms of the drawing, these surfaces are are drawn surfaces and the way that you work those uh, lines and they intersect and they're xing out and diagonaling and and like uh, line differentiation between color and also thick lines here thin lines there all of that uh, you know uh, is what carries the the burden of the illusions that you're casting here if it was just a kind of a haphazard thing it would be work worth maybe one look but the the crafting of the lines as you might Take your body and draw uh, as a, adds a, a depth of, and a dimension to the to the work. Uh, I, I'll, of course, all students start out in clay, and uh, this is another kind of greenware. The uh, problem for me in clay was that I wanted to work large. I also wanted to work immediately, uh, a kind of way that wet clay works. There's a kind of ability to work into the surface quickly, to mark make. Uh, you know, and uh, that, that this material is 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 just so uh, flexible. You know, it will work right into into this balcony. I break the window out. I could run sticks out the window into the trees and back around the building into the doors. You know, it's a very plastic way of working. So I, you know, I translated some of my early uh, attempts in clay into another kind of of a mark making, another kind of plasticity. And I added to that that there are lots of different, uh, there are different sites that uh, people could use a sculpture, but it can't be a permanent sculpture. So I'm, I've, I've uh, directed my work and it all came, kind of came as a, as a piece uh, that I've been offered lots of different spaces that are not permanent art spaces that allow or that demand a kind of plasticity, immediate working, uh, quick. You can't have you there for months working on it. You can be there for two or three weeks. You put it up, it you know, really holds its own in that space. And then three months, two years later, they come and take it out and, and hope something else uh, new will happen in that space. How did you get the idea to use sticks? Well, I think that your childhood always plays a huge part in and your uh, what materials that an artist might choose later in life. Uh, some people are, you know, spend a lot of time drawing as children, and, and uh, uh, not so unusually they would end up being, you know, maybe their work as an artist would be.
focused in that way. Uh, for me, I did a lot of uh, play in the woods as a child. I had made lots of things and had continued to make uh, things out of all kinds of materials, but had a difficult time recognizing myself as an artist. And it took a, a, an attempt at building my own house uh, that led me down a certain path to realizing that, uh, you know, that I had some potential and also that uh, people have bigger needs than just having a chair to sit in or a table. So those are easy things to justify, but uh, that we all have uh, needs for, uh, to describe feelings that we have, but they're not so organized in our mind. So if we see a painting that we, that we connect with, we say, I felt that way, and or a sculpture or a you know, poem or so. That uh, and that there's just as much validity in building a kind of uh, poem and uh, the value to society as there is in building a table or a car or offering a service, say psychology or so. So I feel now I came. I finally was able to kind of justify in my own mind this outreach effort and. Uh, and have really enjoyed myself as a sculptor. Early on, I built a house, and then from that, uh, had a few significant experiences that uh, you know, taught me uh, something about myself, I guess. And then through the uh, trying to develop my own personal aesthetic in this house, realized that, uh, that there was an avenue to be taken and, uh, and traveled to uh, the nearest art school and became in incredibly involved because uh, that day that I entered that place was the best day of my life, you know. And uh, so it, it, it's, been, it's been a wonderful journey for me. And you've achieved what a lot of artists try to achieve, which is constant work and artists in residencies. Yeah, well, you have to leave in some way, leave art history to the art historians and to the future. You, uh, if you worried about whether something was good or not, before you began or whether it was art historically significant, I don't think you would get started. So there's a way that I did not concentrate on trying to become well known, but concentrated on trying to work every day as an artist. And uh, that has made a, was a, uh, was a good move. You know, I also uh, tried to move out from my own community into a wider, ever widening ring of uh, opportunity. And so it's, uh, I, I think that it's as easy to be a national artist as it is to be a local artist. The trouble is you have to be in the nation. You have to be willing to travel. You have to be able to work other places and make yourself known and offer yourself out in a wider ring of, uh, of involvement and complication. So. And you've become an international artist. I've had lots of opportunities. Uh, I usually uh, work word of mouth. People see my work and, and then feel compelled to contact me. Now, my schedule is usually full for several years in advance, although sometimes I do all of a sudden have an opening and I might take a, someone out of sequence, but generally uh, it takes time to, for me to get around to, to working for someone, and that's been a great, great opportunity. Tell us about your work in Germany last, this year, last year? This year in April, uh, I worked in Germany and uh, worked in Osnabrück. It was a very interesting place. I worked for a combination. A lot of times I'll work for uh, uh, in multiple sponsors, and that's the way that they're able to get the money together to have me come. In this case, it was for an art association, a kind of a, a sponsorship group in Osnabrück, Germany, and they sponsor different public, uh, public art situations in the city and, uh, and the city itself, and so that partnership uh, brought me there, and uh, I was lucky enough to work on this this big gate, uh, which was uh, built by the Prussian army on its return after it trounced Napoleon in the 18 in 1812 or 13 or so. And uh, this gate was a significant entrance into the city. There's a ring of roads around it, and they pa all these roads pass by this gate. It had wonderful viewing and lots and lots of people travel through the gate into the city so I was able to work on the front of the gate and make a, a big 
a huge piece that was a series of smaller gates uh, that leaned and, and uh, paid attention to this kind of mother gate there. <laughs> and uh, you were able to walk up over the top of the gate and look down in the pieces as well. So it made a really interesting uh, uh, opportunity, uh, interesting situation where we had lots of, of constant viewing from traffic on the road as well as uh, passers-by. And what kind of trees? In that case, I was able to use willow and that the city itself, they had a, quite a crew that had a few months off in the middle of the winter and were able to gather an enormous amount of material for me. So I was, I was totally flummoxed in a way. I was, the, I was uh, amazed and happy and I couldn't uh, imagine making something uh, very small and disappointing them. I, they had the, uh, gone out and gathered so much wonderful material. So I had to do something significant and, and kind of monumental to go with the monument that I was working on. And uh, what were some of the reactions in Germany? Oh, I think everyone was interested in it because, uh, as I said before, that sticks. Uh, have kind of a universal appeal to children and uh, you know uh, the Germans like uh, maybe particularly uh, you know they have walk they love walking in the woods and each town has its own uh, patch of woods and uh, people go out there and walk around and so I think that uh, that population in particular has a love of nature and and big interest in flowers and and uh, you know, so they were particularly interested in this. Next year I'm working in, in Lacoste, France, near Avignon. Uh, and I really, it's a town and I get to choose a place in the town and work. Um, I've really already made a site visit, which I do each time that I, I make a piece. I usually go there ahead of time and try to work out all of the details of, of working there. Where will I find my material and who's going to help me? Where will, where will we find scaffolding to work with? And uh, you know, we just uh, how the piece would be oriented, and uh, you know how to get. You know, my job is to excite people's imagination, so I have to figure out how to place a piece so that it's that it activates a space and uh, and that plays to the views. Uh, so that when you walk in the door, or you turn the corner, or you come up over the hill, or you round the drive, that you're seeing the sculpture and seeing something significant, and that leads you to kind of a first strike capability and then you're able to get the person to run over and then while you have them then you can show them the subtleties of the work. Interesting. And do you know what kind of trees you'll use in France? Um, I found a place along one of the rivers there that has willow and great okay. profusion so I'll be able to use willow. Willow is a wonderful flexible material and uh, comes in quite a few colors so uh, oftentimes that I'm able to use the subtlety of of massing these colors up uh, and uh, can make uh, a, quite a difference in the feeling of a piece. I, I live in North Carolina and I've lived there most of my life. I, I built a log cabin there and uh, live in a rural area uh, near Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And um, it's a very beautiful university town. So it's, it's easy to be there. And then I travel out, out from there. And what kind of trees do, do you use in North Carolina? Well, and, uh, generally all up the East Coast, and it's true here too in New Jersey, is that there is lots of maple. And any time there's some disturbed ground, then the first thing that seeds into that area is the small maple trees. And so uh, I'm always looking for my material along ditch banks and between buildings and maybe old parking lots that have been abandoned and uh, for sale sign back by, you know, uh, what is a kind of a second growth. Uh, so I'm looking around for various kinds of uh, uh, salvage places where this material might be growing under power lines and get permission to gather and, and then I do gather. Uh, and California, I often use willow, uh, sometimes from a willow farm in Pescadero, California, which I have gotten to be good friends with the fellow there. and so I've got a source of material there. Um, in Maine and in upstate New York, there's willow. There's a, uh, when I worked over at Swarthmore, I had to use crab apple, which was the bane of my existence. But uh, even so, crab apple turned out to be a wonderful material to work with. 
I've used eucalyptus in California. Uh, I've used different kinds of things in Hawaii. I worked in Japan and used bamboo. Of course. So I've, I've worked in lots of different situations. I like maple very well. I think it's uh, it, within the branch itself, it contains a number of colors. Usually the, the trunk of the tree is a, a lighter. And the tips may be very red colored. And so that, that allows within one branch uh, the ability to get contrast if you mask these different parts of the tree. So I've been able to um, use that to some degree. Uh, uh, well, a maple also holds the tips of its uh, limbs. If they dry, they stay on. They look good for a long period of time. So it's, it's turned out to be a quite a utilitarian uh, thing, both because it is so profuse and also because it's, it's just beautiful. How long will this structure last? Well, interiorly, uh, the structure would last forever. Uh, uh, dust is always a problem inside, but if you could wash it off, you know, it would be there. Um, but generally, uh, people have me work for a certain period of time. In this case, the piece will be up through May. And, uh, you know, so that'll be a good long run. And they have an enormous uh, uh, visitor population here. So lots of people will get to see the work. So it's a, it's a worthy trade-off to, to spend a lot of energy on, on building something when so many people get to see it. Dress. In her long white dress 